Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, on the much lighter side of things, this is a video. Aggressive Karen cop gets shut down by man who knows the law. Okay, that's the title of the video. We're not even going to go to that part. I was only watching the beginning because I like to see whether the guys know how to respond. A lot of the guys are argumentative. A lot of the guys are, they debate, they argue for no reason whatsoever. Police officer asks you a question. And they just literally ask you a question. Just ask them, are you conducting an investigation? Then no, I'm unwilling to participate in your investigation. They ask, do you have ID? Yeah, as soon as you can articulate a crime. You know, you must show me your ID. Really? Really? You need to show me an ID is what you're telling me? Huh. That's interesting. Why, why do I need to show you an ID? Oh, no, that's getting into a conversation with you. I don't want to have a conversation with you. I just said, I'm not going to participate in your investigation, so why are you telling me what I must do instead of showing me a law or quoting a law saying I have to? Oh, no, 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 that's a statute. I said law. You should know better than that. Those codes and revised statutes are not law. Come on now, that's only prima facie evidence of law. So I want you to articulate a law, not some prima facie, some by first appearance junk. And then if he continues, now you're harassing me. I need you to cease and desist immediately. At this point, if he doesn't, if he continues to want to assert power, then you simply ask him, at this point, since you're a public official and you've taken an oath to uphold the contract known as the Constitution with this state and with the United States, I'm going to need your bond number, your insurance information, and your identification information as required by law, because I am now claiming that You've just trespassed on my right. See, you have a right to go wherever you want in this country, on public property, whenever you want. Public property, you know how they claim that there's a curfew, public property is closed from this hour to that hour? That's a lie. Those are statutes, people. Now, I'm not telling you to challenge people on that. I'm telling you so that you can understand the law. There's a difference between a law where you're required to do something and a, <clears throat> excuse me, law where you are asked to do something. That's why you hear people asking, is that an order? And if they say, yes, that's an order, well, that's an unlawful order. Because if it does violate your rights, it's an unlawful order. I want to show just this part of the video because I, I'm only doing this because I think this is hilarious. Okay, I really promise you I think it's hilarious. And this young lady that he's about to talk to, man, person after my own heart. Watch this. Are you going in there? Don't be Are fun. you going to get I'm peace? Like, peace no, my friends are sitting right there. Tell them let's make a... Hold on. Now, you see, she started saying to them, what? Are you guys going? Are you filming? She started that conversation and she was joking the whole time. She's a clown. And I like her. This is all impromptu. This is all impromptu. Watch this. It's a joke. What are you doing this for? Oh, we're just making a video for YouTube. Oh, YouTube? Yeah. Look at her face. You can see she's curious. You can see she's, she doesn't care. She doesn't care at all. So watch what she okay. does. Well, what do you want to tell them? <laughs> tell them that you're um, going to have it on news for tonight. Tell me and we're, we're doing a story about people that eat too much ice cream. <laughs> How unhealthy it is. There you go. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is hilarious. And she tells her to come on inside. <laughs> she said, we're celebrities. Okay, and they're all waving to them. So I promise you, I ain't showing you no more. There's no reason to show you no more. I thought that was hilarious. Her friends don't even know that it's a joke. Now, she'll tell them later, but she does. they don't even know that it's a joke that she was telling them that they're going to be on the news for eating too much ice cream. So I think that that right there, those are the type of people that I like running into. The ones who don't take life too seriously. That they, they know when to say when. We live in a world right now where people don't know how to let things go. They like to hold on to things. They like to argue about everything. I keep hearing people talk about, Oh, I got the right to do this. I got the right to film on your property. Who gave you the right to film on my property? 
you don't have no right to do anything on private property. And any of you who think you have the right to invade someone's private property and violate their right to property, that's a common law right, people. Oh, you didn't know that all the rights secured by the First Amendment through the Tenth Amendment are common law rights? Shame on you. The right to speak is a common law right. It's a common people right. Pay attention. Common people right. The right to property is a common people right. The right to practice whatever religion you want to practice is a common people right. It's even the same right that's held in the Bible. The Bible doesn't tell you you get to practice only one religion and you can't choose to practice another. You can choose to practice whatever religion you want. You suffer the consequences, but you still get to choose. It's your choice. Nobody made somebody eat from a tree. He told them what they shouldn't do, and they did it. And guess what? He told them, hey, you do this, there are consequences. He gave them notice. That's where the right to notification comes from, people. He gave them notice prior to inflicting a punishment upon them. The right to notice is pivotal in all contractual agreements. If a person violates a contract, you must notify them, which is why we are creating the document for you to notify all abridgers of your right. Now, is it this one? No, it is not this video. It's the one before him. Uh, I'm going to show you this. This guy, he, he's pretty... He's pretty straightforward, okay? No, this is not her. Uh, this is not her. We got to go to the first one. I don't care about none of that junk right there. This one right here, okay? This one right here, entire police force show up for ID refusal. Now, that one right there, I'm going to suggest you guys take a look at. You'll see how backwards it is. Yes, and the fact that people are going in the post office and starting confusion Yes, they're educating people, but at the same time, I don't agree. Let's get rid of this. This is, they don't like it because, you know, it's YouTube. So let's refresh. Um, ladies and gentlemen, violate their terms of service. They're violating my terms of service because I got my own terms, YouTube. Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to start up again. I have an ad skipper. That's right. It skips ads. I ain't got time for all of those ads. I didn't I didn't volunteer to sign up for all of those ads. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I knew it was going to yeah, start. Yeah. It just it just playing games. I don't like games. Okay. When you pay attention to that video, oh, it just it Well, hold on YouTube. Let me show you what I do for your ad skipping junk. Oh no, I did it wrong. Oh god, no, I did it wrong. Got to go there and then down here you got to go four corners. And then down here you got to go no corners. Well, we're going to go back to four corners. All right. In this video, we're going to go here. Let's see. Nope. Nope. You see how he's one of the workers in the post office and he starts filming. Okay. He starts filming him. That's that tit for tat stuff. They're adults. And because he was filming him, he decided to film him back. And this guy, he told him about a FOIA. He doesn't even know what a FOIA is. Okay, now it's okay. Everybody doesn't know what a FOIA is. You have to, I don't like acronyms either. Freedom of Information Act is what he should have told him. Okay, now he was right. He was 100% right. This guy, and I like him because he does no law. I'll give him his credit because it didn't take him but a second to come up with his angle as to what he was getting ready to do. The moment the guy pulled out his camera and started filming him, the first thing he said is, I need to file a FOIA. What do you need to follow for you for? I need that public record he's creating. What do you mean? He's using his personal camera while on the job, creating a record, and it's a public record now because he did so on public property while on the job doing his public service. So yes, it becomes a public record. It's no longer his. It even becomes worse because he shows the video to the police because they don't know the law. These Postal workers didn't know the law. So he's got these two officers, but hold on now. That's not, that's not, uh oh, still the same two. Hold on. Whew. He's got two more officers in there. Now they're asking them to come outside. What, why we got to go outside? Then he got another officer out here, and there's going to be another officer behind him. He's asking him for his name. I want your name. He's like, my name is John. Well, what's your last name? I don't have to give you a last name. You haven't articulated a crime. 
I, I'm, I haven't committed a crime, so there's no reason for me to give you my last name. You need to identify me. My name is John. Okay? And no more trying to get his name after that, once he suggested that. But this guy, this moron, and I will call him a moron because he comes out like he's in charge. And the first thing he does, and you don't see any stripes on this arm, the first thing he does is he tells him he can't go back inside, and he asks him, do you want, me, do you want him trespass? Ladies and gentlemen, you can't be trespass off public property unless you're causing harm, damage, or interfering with their business. Nothing he did interfered with their business, so they didn't have a right to trespass him, and if they had trespassed him, it would have been a pretty big lawsuit, especially since the postal, and this is what I, I don't agree with people challenging and trying to prove this point, even though they claim they're educating people, the postal union, the so-called postal commission, has the rules and regulations in every post office that you can film anywhere in the common area. I've had postal workers tell me, no, I can't take pictures of the envelopes. Really? Once we put a stamp on it, that's our property. No, it isn't. Not until I hand it back to you. You're putting a stamp on it for me. You're not putting a stamp on it for you. Cha-ching. Well, anyway, after they call all these officers and even questions them, why do you guys call so many officers for one person? They came to flex their muscles, ladies and gentlemen. That's what they came for. Look at his posture. His posture is, I don't like you. And I wish I didn't have to deal with you. You are a nuisance. You are a punk. And if I could lock you up right now, I would. That's why the first thing he talks about is locking him up. But however, I'll say it again. I don't agree with everything this person is doing, including the FOIA request. I understand why he's doing the FOIA request. I understand why he was doing what he was doing. And I understand why he's demonstrating what the ignorance of, of these officers. I get that. I promise you I get it. But you can exercise your rights and emphasize your rights in a much more conducive and productive way to where everybody and their grandmama will recognize it. But be that as it may, he did get a couple of points scored with these officers. You see, they're looking at his phone. So once they looked at his phone, that's now evidence. That's where they lose. That's where he messed up, giving the police his phone, saying that that was evidence. Now, by the way, pay attention so that all of you know. The reason why you can film in a post office is because the post office is filming you. Any place that has cameras, any place that has cameras and films you, you have the right to film back. Just like this guy when he was filming him. He had the right to do that, even though it was petty, tit for tat. He had the right to film him back. There was nothing in saw. He's not invading privacy. Somebody gets in your face with a camera, if they invade that three feet space, that three feet common law space, then they've now trespassed. You have to ask them to back on up, get on off of that, you're too close. And if they don't, then they can be arrested because now they pose a threat. You have a right to your personal space. You do need to understand that. Police officers and other so-called wannabes invade people's personal space all the time. They don't have a reason to do that unless you've committed a crime and unless they can articulate. They say it's for my safety. No, it's not for your safety. I could give up about your safety. What you need to understand is you and your safety are no concern of mine. That's your concern. It has nothing to do with me. That does not give you a right to invade my rights. All you got to do is say, you need to cease and desist. That's the only warning you have to give. You need to cease and desist. And then, well, some courts and some attorneys will say, well, you didn't articulate what they need to cease and desist. Oh, yeah, it was, it was articulated because it was when, in the context of the conversation. doesn't matter if he didn't understand it because I'd already told him he had invaded my space. And when I told him he needed to cease and desist, I wasn't telling him he needed to cease and desist chewing bubblegum. I was within the same conversation. So it doesn't matter how you are claiming he could have misunderstood. There was no misunderstanding at the time because notice his next comment, that type of thing. That's how you take care of the ignorance. Again, I'm not advocating you guys causing confrontations with them. The whole time they're standing here, somebody else out there is doing something wrong. Somebody else out there is violating somebody's rights, but they have more than six officers here at this scene for one person who was just videotaping.
and it's a trespass call. That's it. Just a trespass call. You think they need six officers? They said they were just getting off duty and they were at the gas station filling up their vehicles. Really? That's interesting, huh? Just getting off duty. That's a lie. Ladies and gentlemen, how could they be just getting off duty? And they're there this long? They weren't getting off duty, ladies and gentlemen. You know what they were doing? They all decided to show up because they had nothing better to do. There was nothing going on. And so they needed action. That's why you see all the officers tend to have a little bit of weight to them. Not size, weight. All right. I apologize for that, ladies and gentlemen. This is supposed to be a lighthearted uh, video showing about that young lady wanting to play a joke on her friends. You know, tell them it's going to be on the evening news. You know, uh, I thought that was all right. Uh-uh. Add Skipper. No, got to get rid of that. I paused it. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's get rid of that. Yep, too. Um, working on a couple of things for you guys. Working on a couple of things for myself. A lot of work. I really do mean a lot of work. Um, I'm going to try to get that document finished today. If not, it will most certainly be finished tomorrow. You say all I'm doing is proofreading. Every time I proofread it, I'm finding that something else needs to be added. Now, when I say something else needs to be added, that for your benefit, not for mine, needs to be added to explain things a little bit more. Because remember, I have to convert the document. If I left it the way it was, it was perfect for our company sending it out. Because all we have to do is deal with the context. But for you, I need to put things that explain everything so when you go to court, that's your main document, ladies and gentlemen. That's your complaint. That document right there, that's the basis for your complaint. That's the basis for everything you say in court because it articulates all of your rights. All you got to do is take each paragraph, put it in chat GPT, and say, please explain this to me. I'm not understanding this, and it will explain. Let's do an example. You guys don't mind? I don't mind. Hold on. We need this one. I opened up the wrong one. Where is it? This one? No, it's this one. That other one was the bankruptcy court. Yeah, this is the small claims court. So, no, we're going to do the document. I, I was going to do that, but let's do this from Rahil. Rahil. This from Rahil. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take paragraph number, let's do paragraph number eight. Whew. Paragraph number eight is a long paragraph. So hold on. Dollar for dollar. Copy. Okay. So what I'm going to do, because y'all going to be here with me as we do it. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. Hold on now. Please explain. Please explain what this is saying, please. Comma, and could you explain it as if I was 17 years old? Comma, just graduating from high school? Question mark. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm doing here is I'm All right, showing you the Let's do break the exact this down into simpler thing. terms as if you were 17 and just graduating high school. This text talks about a specific law from June 5, 1933, which was about making sure the money, coins, and currency in the United States had a consistent value. Here's what it means, piece by piece. Dollar for dollar. This phrase means that if you owe someone money, you can pay them back in any form of U.S. Money, like coins or paper money, and that should be accepted as a full payment. It doesn't matter what form the money is in, a dollar is a dollar, whether it's in coins, paper, or any other form that's considered legal money. Legal tender, this is a term that means any form of money that must be accepted if offered in payment of a debt. The law mentioned makes it clear that all U.S. Money, as legal tender, is valid for paying debts. Public policy, this part is saying that it's a general rule or principle in the U. That creditors, the people you owe money to, 
can't refuse your payment if you are paying with legal tender. They have to accept it. Discharged upon payment, tender when you pay your debt with legal tender, the debt is considered fully paid or discharged. You're all squared up, and you don't owe anything more. 59 Stat 237 2, this refers to a specific section of the law that talks about certain papers or documents, not detailed here, but likely referring to financial instruments like bonds or notes, that are to be treated as having the same value as the amount of money they represent, and they're backed by the U.S. Government. This backing means the government promises these papers are worth their face value in U.S. Dollars. Eligible papers, these are likely financial documents or instruments that are considered good for paying debts, just like regular money. The law is saying these papers are guaranteed by the U.S. Government, meaning they're as good as cash because the government says they are. Full faith and credit of the United States, this phrase means the U.S. Government's promise to back something up completely. If the government says these, eligible papers, are worth a certain amount, they're promising that they really are worth that much. Questions at the end, these are asking if it's true that Congress, the part of the U.S. Government that makes laws, didn't have the right to do all this stuff with money and, eligible papers. It's challenging the reader to question whether Congress had the authority to decide what counts as money for paying debts and to guarantee the value of these papers. In summary, this text is about a law from 1933 that says all U.S. Money is good for paying debts, dollar for dollar, no matter the form. It also mentions some special financial documents that the government backs up, promising they're worth real money. The questions at the end are a way of asking, do you really think Congress didn't have the power to make these decisions about money and debts? That's all you have to do, ladies and gentlemen. I could right. have explained it better than that. Down into Wait, terms. hold on. What did I tell you about jumping 17? in here when, when you had a chance to come in? You took your time. No, go on someplace. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, she's always trying to take control. Again, the point that I'm trying to make here is the stuff we're working on. I have to word it in such a way that you'll get that answer if you ask the question the same way I did. That's what you're going to do with every document, every law, every anything that you don't understand, the rules of the court. You're going to put it in ChatGPT and ask it to explain it to you and pick an age, the age where you were at the point where you just about understood everything and put that age there and say, explain it to me, and then make sure if you're gonna do it as 17, 18, make sure you do it in the sense that you are about to graduate high school, okay? Because that means that you have somewhat of an education or uh, 15, 16 years old, about to graduate to the 10th grade, that type of thing. Make sure you put something like that because if you're gonna graduate, that means you have pretty good grades. If you just are an eight year old, nine year old, or 15 year old, 16 year old, then, and you don't mention that you're about to graduate or something like that, then that means you just average. And it will give you that average bubblegum response that ain't gonna be as detailed as what you just saw there. Okay, there you go. I hope that this last part gives you an understanding because like I said, I could not have explained this better. Lord have mercy. And he says, he tries to be stupid. He knows what this act says. He knows what 52 Stat 237, that's why he says likely bonds and notes. He knows exactly what it's referring to, okay? Shh, but don't tell nobody. All right, y'all has a good day. I just took the time. I just wanted to share y'all what the all about the young lady wanting to play a trick on her friends. So I apologize. That's called a practical joker. It's all practical. Gotta go speak to the dogs. I gotta go play with some dogs right now. So I'll see y'all later. Goodbye.